What's going on guys? Jeff here from Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be talking about dipping corals for beginners. Hope everybody is having a fantastic day and if you're new to what we're doing here this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do make sure you smash that subscribe button in the face. Alright guys so today what I want to talk about is dipping corals more specifically a beginner's guide to dipping corals and if you're new to the hobby this is definitely a video that you need to watch. So without further ado let's jump into dipping corals for beginners. Alright so this is my bucket that pretty much has all of my items that I use for dipping coral. Uh, we're going to kind of talk through um, what this kit does and it isn't anything really expensive. Um, a lot of the items, I think the most expensive item is this bucket. I do use these all the time. These are a two gallon bucket that you can pick up at a lot of the big box hardware stores. Um, I think they're, it's like three bucks. This item right here, minus the dip, this jug is something I picked up at the dollar store. Um, I'm sure it's not a food grade plastic, but what I use this for is uh, measuring water and also rinsing the coral off after it's been in the dip and it's very important to make sure that you rinse the coral which we'll get into in a little bit more detail uh, prior to adding it to your display tank because you don't want dip getting into your tank. Uh, this glass mixer uh, came with the uh, graduated cylinder kit that I bought off Amazon and I've been using this glass uh, rod for mixing the water, uh, making sure that the dip is completely dissolved prior to adding the coral to the solution. I also usually have um, some glue because I like to make sure that my uh, corals aren't going to get knocked over and thrown under into some crevice or upside down on the sand bed. So I usually use some glue to attach it to the rock work and hold it in place. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest problems of introducing new coral to the tank is making sure they stay in place because you have a bunch of critters in there that are moving around knocking stuff over and then I have two containers um, that I got from the grocery store uh, and then I just have kept around with some whip topping in there so that's a food grade plastic there when I'm dipping a lot of corals I use the bucket when I'm dipping one or two corals I use these individual uh, containers and this jug that I got from the dollar store I use that for measuring water so I will keep the contents of this bucket under the cupboard uh, under a stand and it's always ready to go when I run to the local fish store or place an order online I just grab my bucket and I'll start dipping coral now as far as dips go I use different dips for different things I would say that coral rx is probably the base of every dipping regime for my tanks uh, the reason being is it works i know it works i've seen it work uh, and it is been around for a long time it's proven uh, this is the coral rx pro so this is a concentrated formula i tend to go with this because i don't really want to have uh, a large jug kicking around or the bigger bottle uh, it doesn't make any sense to me to pay the extra shipping these smaller bottles i think this is a one ounce yep it's a one fluid ounce bottle i dip a lot of corals so this is something that's going to last you a very very long time uh, but i definitely like the smaller container and more concentrated formula of coral rx so what they recommend is you take 30 drops add it to a gallon of salt water mix it up and utilize that for your dipping for me i don't typically take a gallon of salt water and all you need to do is figure out how many ounces are in a gallon of water which is 128 ounces i'm going to use 16 ounces to mix my coral dip 16 goes into 128 eight times i'm going to take 30 which is the recommended dosage per gallon and divide that by eight and that's going to equal 3.75 i'm going to round up the four just to make it easy so for 16 ounces of water salt water i'm going to use four drops of coral rx pro 
and that is going to give me the solution that I need to dip my corals safely, not cause it any harm, but also be able to remove any pests that may be on that coral. So we're going to go ahead and mix up some Coral RX with some salt water right now. So I got my 16 ounces of water. I'm going to add that to bucket one. I'm going to add the remaining salt water to this bucket to the jug. One, two, three, four. I'm going to mix this up for a minute and then we'll come back and dip our corals. All right, so we have our coral dip solution in this bucket right here. We have clean salt water in this middle bucket and clean salt water in this jug. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our colony of zoanthids that we just picked up from the local fish store and going to add it to the dip solution for 10 to 15 minutes. And once the 10 to 15 minutes has passed, we're going to rinse it off in this bucket, which is clean salt water. And then we're going to also rinse it in this jug before adding it to our display tank. So we're actually going to rinse the coral twice before it's even added to the tank. One thing that you want to keep in mind when you're dipping corals is time and also the temperature of the water. You don't want this water to get too cold because that potentially could lead to some problems with your coral. So what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to grab a colony of zoanthids or a small frag of zoanthids out of the water box. We're going to dip it uh, for 10 to 15 minutes, stir it a couple times with this glass rod, and then we'll do the switcheroo on the rinses and add it back to the display tank. So since we have a little bit of time while we wait for the coral dip to work, it's magic. Let's talk about what Coral RX is effective at removing. Coral RX is effective at removing acropora eating flatworms, montnipora eating nudibranchs, bristle worms, zoanthid eating spiders, and red flatworms. All of these critters are extremely bad news and you don't want them anywhere near your corals or your display tank. Not only is Coral RX effective with the pests that we just spoke about, but it also aids in the treatment of hair allergy, rapid tissue necrosis, slow tissue necrosis, and bacterial infections, and much, much more. I've been using Coral RX for a really long time. I know that it works, and it's proven itself to me, and that's why it's part of my dipping process. So once the 15 minutes is up, it's time to take the frag Give it one last rinse in the dip. Make sure that if there's any pests on it whatsoever that they're going to come off and not go into the salt water, clean salt water rinse. We remove it from the dip with my left hand and then I place it into the rinse bucket which I then grab it with my right hand. Once I grab it with my right hand, there's no going back. It's gonna get rinsed one more time and then it goes into the display tank. By adding these extra steps in the rinsing process and using a completely different hand that did not enter the dip, I am going to ensure that I am not adding as much dip to my display tank. Dipping corals is relatively easy and it's a very important step in maintaining a successful reef tank. If you're not dipping corals, you are subjecting your display tank and your corals to an unnecessary risk. But if you follow the steps that are outlined in this video, you're going to be much more successful and you are going to drastically reduce the risk of introducing any pest to your reef tank. In a future video, I will go into the subject of quarantining corals as well as my new dip process in a future video. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell. And if you need to pick yourself up a bottle of Coral RX, there's a link down in the description below. All right, folks, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. That's it for today, but don't be sad because there's plenty more Mad Hatter Reef videos to go around.